Being diagnosed with atrial fibrillation can be overwhelming. And as you start your treatment, you probably have a lot of questions like, what causes atrial fibrillation? What does this diagnosis mean for your day-to-day -day life? Is there anything you can do to decrease the effect of AFib on your long-term health and your everyday activities? The good news is that you do not have to take this journey alone. Your healthcare team will be with you every step of the way. By working with your team and by playing your part in the treatment plan, you can take charge of your atrial fibrillation experience and live a happy, healthy life. Hi, my name is Daniel Aliash, and I am a cardiac electrophysiologist. In other words, I'm a cardiologist who specializes in treating heart rhythm disorders. The purpose of this video is to provide you with information on how you can decrease the impact of atrial fibrillation on your life. Working with your healthcare team towards these lifestyle modifications can decrease the number of times you go into atrial fibrillation, the total number of time you remain in atrial fibrillation, and the negative effects of atrial fibrillation on your quality of life. So let's get started. In addition to medications and or procedures recommended by your care team, here are five things you can do to lower your chance of having AFib episodes or a stroke caused by AFib. One, keep your weight healthy and keep moving. Being overweight is a risk factor for AFib recurrence. At least 30 minutes of daily exercise like a brisk walk can make a big difference to your heart. Talk to your provider about setting healthy diet and exercise goals. Two, avoid smoking and drinking alcohol. Alcohol can be a trigger for AFib symptoms and stopping smoking lowers your risk of stroke. Your care team can help you make plans to quit smoking and drink less alcohol. Three, manage your diabetes. If you live with diabetes, controlling your blood sugar may be important to manage your AFib. Talk to your provider if you are having trouble getting or taking your diabetes medications. Four, control your blood pressure and cholesterol. If you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure and or high cholesterol, keep taking your medications and talk to your care team if you have any trouble getting or taking them. Five, ask about sleep apnea. Patients with sleep apnea experience decreased oxygen supply to the body while asleep, which increases the risk for AFib occurrence. If you snore at night and experience fatigue during the day, ask your provider about getting tested and treated for sleep apnea. To find out more or locate a specialist in your area, visit upbeat.org. Thank you for watching. While there is no cure for atrial fibrillation, there are numerous treatments available ranging from medications to procedures, which along with lifestyle modifications can help you live a healthy life. And remember, you're not on this journey alone. So do not hesitate to ask questions and lean on your healthcare team for support. For more videos and information about AFib, check out our YouTube channel, Heart Rhythm TV, linked below. And also, remember to visit www.upbeat.org to find a heart rhythm specialist in your area.